auto management item attributes in order for you to transact items in auto management you've got to predefine and preset certain item attributes in inventory module it all depends on what kind of a transaction and associated business process flow that you would like to make in auto management for example for standard order to cash business process flow you've got to set up certain minimum auto management related item attributes in inventory and for other process flows such as an internal requisition or assemble to order or pick to order or configure to order you've got to set up different sets of item attributes within inventory so at this time i'm going to show you the most important item attributes in inventory so to set up the item attributes you've got to go to inventory responsibility and navigate to item definition form and once you open this form you will see that form something similar to this one in order to understand further let's go into oracle applications and query this form so i'm going to minimize this and then i will switch to oracle applications and here i'm already into responsibility inventory vision operations usa and then i'm going to go and navigate to items and master items and the moment you click on that you've got to select the inventory master organization so i've already selected it which is v1 vision operations but if at all you've got a custom setup then you've got to choose your setup specific inventory master organization now i'm going to query an existing item to explain you the item related auto management attributes and you've got to set up a minimum of the inventory attributes wherein the item should be an inventory item and if at all it's a physical item then it should be stockable transactable and reservable whereas if it is a service then you don't need to stock but you've got to transact and reserve then once you have set up all that then you've got to go to auto management tab so you can see this one over here and then you've got to set up all these attributes now let's quickly go through a couple of important ones the first one is customer ordered so when you check this attribute you indicate whether to allow an item to be ordered by external customers you can add any customers ordered items to price list in oracle order management then you've got a similar attribute over here customer orders enabled so this is a item defining attributes and once you have defined this then if you want to temporarily switch off this item from transacting from the external customers then you uncheck this attribute similarly you check the internal order item to indicate to the system that this particular item can be internally ordered via internal requisitions and internal sales orders but during the course of your business process if you would like to tell the system that i don't want to transact this item for certain specific period then you go in and you uncheck this attribute to state that and when you uncheck it you would not be able to internally transact this item for internal requisitions and internal sales orders a classic examples could be if at all there is a product recall during that time you don't want this particular item to be ordered by the customer so you simply come here and uncheck this box and the customers wouldn't be able to order this item once you identify the problem fix the problem and you are satisfied by your quality control and compliance that the item is fit for sale again then you come back here and check this box again and then the customer would be able to order it externally via your external facing portals so that's the importance of these four attributes then shippable as it indicates by its name when you check this you would be able to pick and ship this particular item 
as a part of your order to cash lifecycle. If you uncheck this particular checkbox and during that time, if at all there are transactions in your system such as open sales orders, then the system is going to give you a warning that there are open orders, but it won't stop you. And then the next one here is OE transactable. This indicates whether a demand can be placed for an item by Oracle Auto Management. So as soon as you enter or book a sales order, according to your system setup, it places a demand for that particular sales order line in inventory. And based on your setup, that demand could include a hard reservation as well in the inventory. So the item would be reserved for that particular sales order line and no one else can take off that item. And majority of the times, these two checkboxes goes hand in hand. So when shapeable is turned on, you got to have the OE transactable turned on. Obviously, items that you ship would be able to place a demand in auto management and optionally can make a hard reservation in inventory. Then you have a attribute called as pick components. You indicate whether an item has a bill of material with options or classes or included items picked from finished goods inventory. This particular attribute is especially important when you have a pick to order process flow items. And you must check this checkbox for pick to order items. As far as the assemble to order items are concerned, this particular checkbox must be unchecked. All right, then you've got assemble to order. So this particular checkbox, you check when an item is a manufactured item or an assembled item within your shop floors. Basically, the process of assembled order is that when you book an order, then automatically it creates a work order and work in process module as long as the item is not available in the inventory. And then the assembly or the manufacturing process commences within work in process in coordination with Oracle Manufacturing. And then once the item is completely assembled and manufactured, then it is sent to your finished goods inventory wherein the goods or the quantity goes up and then you ship this item to the end customer. Then you have a attribute here called as ship model complete. This attribute is used to indicate whether any configuration derived from this model can ship only when all required quantities of all configuration components are available, which includes the options or included items. And if you check this option on, then you must have the pick component attribute also turned on. Then you've got the attribute called as returnable, which indicates whether an item is returnable by the customers or not. So if at all there is a defective item and the customer would like to return it, this attribute will determine whether the customer can make a return or not. A classic example could be when you order certain specific items on e-commerce portals such as eBay or Flipkart, certain items are not returnable such as cakes or bicycles or certain electronic items. So this particular attribute can be leveraged there to indicate whether an item is returnable or not. Then you've got an attribute called as RMA inspection required. So when an item is returned, the process flow is called as return 
material authorization or RMA. So at that point of time, whether you would like to inspect the return items before it is transferred to your return sub inventory. If you want to tell your system whether inspection is required, then you check this checkbox. Now let's come on to the right hand side and go through the ATP related options. The first attribute over here is check ATP and it's got a couple of values over here which includes material only or resource only and material and resource only. Or you've got a value of none. So basically this you use to indicate whether to check available to promise or capable to promise information when placing a demand via sales order and you form. During that time, the system will automatically check the inventory whether this item is available or not. And if not available, then when the expected delivery is possible. So ATP works in conjunction with your scheduling process. Then the second field here is ATP rule. So you enter a user defined available to promise rule over here. ATP rules defines the supply and demand sources, which could include your supply sources, such as your suppliers or purchase orders, requisitions, and so on, or demand sources, such as your sales orders. It also gives information about the time fence parameters and the available to promise calculation methods. So you got to define this ATP rules as a part of your order management and inventory setup. And once you have defined that, you can choose it from a list of values and pick up a specific ATP rules that you would like to associate this item with. Then you've got the field ATP components, which has got several values just like check ATP, material only, resource only, and material and resource. You indicate whether to include in available to promise checking additional components in the bill of material for assemble to order or pick to order items. These components are included in ATP check if check ATP for the component is turned on. Then you've got picking rule. So this is picking rule that you've got to define it as a part of your inventory or order management setup. And as far as the definition of picking rule is concerned, you can define it in inventory module itself. So if you come to this navigator and look for picking, then you will find this picking rules workbench wherein you can define the picking rules. So let's query the existing ones. And once you have defined a picking rules, then you can associate an inventory item with the picking rule. And I would recommend this is a better method rather than assigning a picking rule to an item in inventory form. So here you can directly go and assign the predefined items. All right, now let's go back. The next one is default shipping organization. And as the name suggests, whatever shipping organization that you gave over here will default at the sales order line, which one can always override if they like. Then the next field is default sales order source type. So whether it's an internal source or an external source, you specify here, then shipping inventory, you specify the shipping inventory from where you want to ship the items from. So these two fields goes hand in hand. That inventory must exist in the shipping organization that you specify. And at the bottom, you've got tolerances. So what is the percentage of tolerances that you would like to allow, if at all, if it is over shipment or under shipment, 
Similarly, for returns, what's the percentage of tolerances you would like to allow for over return and under return? So these are all the auto management related attributes. There are a couple of attributes that auto management shares with receivables and that goes in this invoicing tab. The first two attributes are related to each other. So the first one invoiceable item indicates the system whether this particular item can be invoiced in receivables and if you want to temporarily switch off that particular item from invoicing then you can disable this particular attribute. Then there are several other auto management related attributes spread across in other tabs such as bill of materials or purchasing or even planning. But I'm gonna, gonna go into the detail of that because it will be too technical for you and it will bounce off. So as we go deep in the course, I'm gonna explain you this and we'll keep coming back to this form and I'm gonna explain you how those attributes work in auto management module.